Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this video, I'd like to explain to you a method I devised to perform long division when I was still at <coughs> elementary school. Now, as most of you know, in elementary school, you still don't know how to do a lot of things. For example, uh, you don't know how to work with negative numbers and you haven't learned everything with respect to the basics of algebra. So you don't really know much about uh, solving even simple linear equations. So uh, of course I was way ahead of the rest of my schoolmates and I could do all those things. Uh, so when I first encountered the long division algorithm as was being taught by my teachers, I found it to be quite tedious. So let's look at an example. Um, how about 343 divided by 7? Well, the way this is normally taught is your teacher will ask you to learn a method rote and tell you, well, se does 7 divide 3? Well, it doesn't. So the next thing to do is to consider, does 7 divide 34? Yes, it does. It goes into 34 four times. And 4 times 7 is 28. And 34 minus 28 is 6. And then we bring down the 3, because 7 doesn't divide 6, but it divides 63 nine times, and there's no remainder in this case, so 343 divided by 7 is 49. Well, this method is not a good method because it requires that you remember a lot of things, and it's not even based on the original Euclidean uh, method of division, which <coughs> is really a lot simpler, and that's what I'm going to show you <coughs> how to use in this particular uh, method. So for the first part, I'm going to assume you don't know how to perform arithmetic with negative numbers, only positive numbers. Uh, and then later on, I'll show you how to do the same algorithm or the same method, regardless, as if you knew how to work with negative numbers as well. Well, what we do in division is we actually measure the dividend. This is the dividend with the divisor. And this is the divisor, okay? Um, so we can s just take a look at this here and say, well, what's the largest product uh, of 7 and another number that will not exceed the dividend? So, okay, if I say... 50, if I put 50 up here, 50 times 7 is 350. Okay, well, that's too big, so we don't want to have 50, right? So let's just say, let's take any, uh, let's take 40, for example, or something less. It doesn't matter, anything less than 50. So let's take 40, okay? 40 times 7 is what? 280, yes? Okay. And 280 from 343 leaves you with how much? 63, right? Okay. And now we know that 7 from our times tables goes exactly into 63 nine times. So 9 times 7 is 63 and no remainder. And so the answer is 40 plus 9, which is 49. Okay? So that's one way to do it. I didn't have to do it that way. I could have done it this way too. There are many, many ways to do the same thing. So let's do it another way now. Let's say that we chose 30 instead of 40. Okay, So we chose 30 here. In which case, we'd have 210. And the difference here would be 3, 3, 1. Yes? Okay, well, it's easy to see that if we multiply 10 by 7, we'd get 70. And 70 is less than 133, right? And so... When we subtract this, we'll have 63 here, and finally, we'll have 9 times 7, which is 63, and the remainder. And if we add these up again, 
we'll have 49. So we'll get the same answer regardless of how we choose to do it, provided we keep this product between the partial quotients, 40 and 9 are called partial quotients, and the divisor less than the dividend, okay? So it's a very simple method and there's not much to remember. All you need to know is how to add, subtract, and multiply in order to do long division. So just these three operations and you can do any long division this way without breaking your head about the different uh, columns such as thousands, hundreds, tens, tenths, hundreds, etc. Okay. Now, this method here that I've just shown you works if you don't know arithmetic with negative numbers. So let's suppose now that you've learned how to do arithmetic also with negative numbers. So you're a little bit older now and in a later grade and you'll see now that you can do all these things even if you had negative numbers. So say for example, let's go take the same example here. Let's say you said, okay, well, let's multiply 7 by 50. It doesn't matter what you put up here. 50 times 7 is 350, isn't it? Yes. And so what's 343 minus 350? It's going to be how much? Well, that's going to be 7, isn't it? Is that correct? Minus 7, yes. So 343 minus 350 is going to leave us with minus 7. And how many times is 7 going to minus 7? Minus 1. And so we have no remainder, and the answer is once again 49. Truth be told, it really doesn't matter what you put up here. You could put minus 10. And minus 10 times 7 is minus 70. Okay? And now you subtract these two here, and what will you get? You'll get 413, right? And then you'll say, okay, well, let's just say 7 times 50 this time. <coughs> so we'll put 50 here, like that. And that will give us 350, right? 50 times 7 is 350. And we subtract these. And what do we get? 63 left. And, of course, the 7 we know goes into 63 nine times, doesn't it? Okay, and let's see. Minus 10 plus 50 is 40, plus 9 is 49. So we get the same answer no matter which way we do it. Okay, and this method here <coughs> could be introduced a little bit later when your students know how to do uh, division with, or uh, arithmetic with negative numbers. Okay, so now let's look at uh, fractions as well, and I'll show you that this works also pretty much the same with fractions. Um, okay, so let's let's take this example now. Let's say you had 323 divided by 7. And you could say, okay, well, that goes in there 40 times, so you'll get 280, yes. And that will leave us with 43, yes. And 7 goes into 43 6 times, and that's 42. And we'll have 1 left here, won't we? And so the answer here would be 40 plus 6, which is 46 plus 1 over 7, or just 46 and 1 seventh, yes? Okay, so you can see that you'll get the same result if you have fractions. And now what about if you had something like this, 1 divided by 4? Well, it doesn't matter what you put up here. But in order to get a quick answer, let's do this. Let's say we have 1 fifth here, right? And we'll multiply 1 fifth by 4, and we'll get 4 fifths, won't we? Okay. And how much is going to be left here? If we subtract this, we're going to have 1 fifth, right? And so, what if we multiply that by 1 25th? 4 by 1 25th, right? Then we'll have 4 25ths. 
Okay, so it doesn't really matter how I do this, but let's just make sure that I've done this arithmetic right. So I said multiply this by four fifths, and I subtract it, and I'll get one fifth. And then I said multiply this by uh, one over twenty-five. Yes, which is four twenty-fifths, and so we'd have over here one fifth minus four twenty-fifths which is the same as 5 minus 4, which is 1 25th, right? Okay, so I'll just show you now that this will work regardless. So the answer here of 1 divided by 4 will be 1 5th plus 1 25th plus 1 25th divided by 4, which is 1 over 100, right? So if you add all these up, what do you get? Let's see. That goes in there 25 times. And I've obviously made an error here somewhere, haven't I? Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, what I really wanted to do was have 2 tenths, which is 1 fifth. That's correct. Let's just check that. 2 tenths is 1 fifth plus 5 hundredths, which is 1 twentieth, not 1. Okay, so my error was here. So. Let's go back here again. It doesn't matter if I do it this way. Uh, all right, let's just finish it off this way here first, as I've done it. So provided I've done my arithmetic right, which I have done it here, what will the answer be? And then I'll come back to this and show you how to do it another way. And that'll be uh, uh, 20. 5 goes into 120. And that'll be plus 4 times plus 1 which is 25 over 100, which is 1 quarter, okay? So it doesn't matter how you do it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and choose a different uh, partial quotient here. Instead of, instead of uh, 1 over 25 here, I'm going to choose 1 over 20, okay? So let's do this whole process again. So let's just erase everything. Whoops. Come on. Okay. So get rid of that. Get rid of that, 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 and that. And let's come back here again. We'll, so we'll start off again with one fifth, no problem. And that's four fifths, and that will leave us with one fifth. But now in this example here, I'm going to multiply it by one twentieth, yes? Because 5 over 100 is 1 twentieth. And so I'll have 4 twentieths, like that, and then I'll have 1 fifth minus 4 twentieths, which is what? Which is, oops, did I do that right? Uh, 5 into there, 4, and <laughs> I probably made a little mistake here. Uh, 5 goes into 24 times. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. It's supposed to be 0. Okay. So, 1 fifth minus 4 twentieths is 0. And we expect 0 remainder. And now if we add these two up, we'll get a quarter, won't we? <laughs> can be a little, a little confusing if you're not used to it. But it's a good method. And so that goes into there 4 plus 1, which is 5 over 20, which is 1 quarter, okay? So it doesn't really matter how you do it. You can even put negative numbers up here. Um, for example, you could have done this by choosing any number. You could have said uh, minus 2 up here, right? And you could have said, okay, well, that's minus 8. Yeah, and we subtract these here. We'll have 9, won't we? Right? And so the answer here would be minus 2 plus 9 quarters. And that's the same as minus 8 quarters plus 9 quarters, which is a quarter. As you can see, when you have a proper fraction, nothing really happens. So for example, if you say 1 divided by 4, all you're really doing is just putting the 1 on the top of the vinculum and the 4 on the bottom. And that's all you really have. Okay, and so this is a little bit about how you can teach your uh, little math dragons long division without all the uh, rules that they need to remember. So all they need to know here are how to do arithmetic with 
subtraction, addition, and multiplication, and understand the basics of fractions. And once they have that, they don't need to remember any rote method here where you uh, say, well, how many times does 7 go into 3 and then 32 and then have carries and all that sort of nonsense. So, and this here is based on the actual uh, meaning of division, which is measuring the dividend, which is measuring the dividend with the divisor and getting the total uh, quotient up here once you add the partial quotients. So I hope that's been uh, informative to you and you've learned something. This is a method that I devised because I didn't really like the method my teachers were using when I was very young. And I've always used this method. It's a lot faster. I don't really have to remember things. And I don't like remembering things, so it suits me just fine. Well, this has been a very uh, simple presentation. I hope that you will take away something from it and be able to improve your teaching of long division. This is the new calculus channel, and I'm John Gabriel. Goodbye.